In other news, Australia has now done something that no other country has been able to do. Its Senate today approved a law that bans children under the age of 16 from using social media. They could like ban certain videos that people can yeah. watch and like say you can't post until you're 16 and over. That, that's a and good one. Just some of the reaction from teenagers in Australia. Social media giants like TikTok, Facebook, Instagram and X have one year to enforce the ban. Australia's Prime Minister said the ban would give children a childhood and give their parents some peace of mind. But critics, including some you just heard from at the age of 16 or under, warned that the move could have unintended consequences. Let's turn to CBC's Mark Carcassol, who's been following this breaking news story for us. So, Mark... How is this going to work, but also what are the motivations behind this new law? As far as how it's going to work, that's a question a lot of people are asking, and I think it's a question that hasn't really been settled yet, and that's part of the reason why social media companies have a year to work this out, and there's a lot of onus on them. They would be the ones responsible for making sure kids under the age of 16 do not have accounts on their various platforms, and if they don't, they could face fines up to $50 million Australian, which equates to about $45.5 million Canadian. Uh, in terms of the motivations behind it, as you mentioned, they want to give children a childhood. They worry that social media gets kids addicted to their screens, gets them exposed to scammers and predators. That's the way they're taking it, and that's the way many proponents of this bill are looking at it, the benefits. But there are a lot of people criticizing it who say that it puts them at privacy risks because they're going to have to identify themselves as adults in some way. It would take away parents' authority. It would drive kids to the dark web. There's also a real concern there about isolating kids. And Suicide Prevention Australia put out a statement about all this, calling the measure reckless, asking why it's being rushed through. While we acknowledge the challenges associated with online platforms, this legislation fails to consider the positive aspects of social media. They say social media provides vital connections for many young Australians, allowing them to access mental health resources, peer support networks, and a sense of community. Cutting off this access risks exacerbating feelings of loneliness and isolation. And that's a concern being expressed by many in Australia and around the world, really, because this could serve as a template for other countries in the future. Here is Australian social media expert Susan Grantham with her take on it. These issues at the centre of the reason why we need to make change in the social media space aren't really simple issues. Um, and what I mean there is that we have got young people's lives at stake um, and a blanket ban is not going to resolve those issues. And the social media companies seem to agree with that. They seem to agree with anything, obviously, that goes against this plan uh, because there is money at stake here and a lot of work that they would have to be uh, have to put in. But keep in mind, too, that a lot of them are also not ruling out legal challenges to this. So this could be more than a year before it's implemented. Now, off the top, we heard some response from teenagers in Australia. Generally, what are the people who would be directly affected by this saying? Well, you heard those ones off the top who mentioned that maybe there could be some measures, but not a total blanket ban. And then others are saying, you can go ahead and try to ban us from using it. We'll just find ways anyway. We all know that social media isn't good for us, and but it is hard to get off of it because like, once again, it's really deeply ingrained in our society and how we interact with other people. In order to achieve these effects, we should take it upon ourselves to regulate our own personal social media usage rather than being forced off of it. They say that if you don't, kids will find ways around it. And there is a precedence for that. France tried to enact last year similar legislation for kids 15 and under. And they found that half of the kids that were falling under this umbrella were just using VPNs and connecting to different regions to get around that anyway. So uh, they'll always find a way. Yes, they will. But let's see. <laughs> let's see if the how the teenagers in Australia yeah. are going to fare with this. Thanks so much, Mark. Thank you.